Hi friends, I'm kind of batch um, talking about some of my things that I'm really excited about. So I excuse the continual style here. But today I'd like to talk about five recommend five ish recommendations for autumn that I think would be really great if you're looking for something new or just a little off the beaten path. Um, I'm excited. Also, I I like creepy, but I don't like very dark. And I noticed a lot of the autumn or October recommendations can be super dark, which, you know, there's a time and place for sometimes for some of those, but I wanted to give some alternate suggestions that are kind of light and cozy. So the first one I wanna recommend is Elizabeth Goosh. And this one I've been just craving, Gentian Hill. And this one is, uh, I believe, off the coast of France. And she, it is a fictional place based on a real place. This follows a young girl. Her name is Stella. And it has just Gouge's magical, lyrical writing. And it has just wonderful characters. A young man actually deserts the Navy. Um, and there is a mystery, mysterious chapel and legend surrounding this chapel. There is a wonderful mentor, doctor type figure. Um, also people in Stella's life. I believe it's either her grandparents or an uncle or something. That's been a long time since I've read this. And for some reason, I've just been thinking of this book and craving it. So really it could be any Gouge because autumn lends to just a cozy feeling and Gouge is the queen of cozy and you do have to work a little at her books i wouldn't say they're super easy to read especially when you're just beginning but as you get in and you dig you are just richly rewarded so i hope to read this this autumn and just enjoy this story again um, I know there are some that are really atmospheric for this time of year, maybe not set in autumn, but like have that feel. There's one on the English Civil War, which is called The White Witch. I love that one. There's also The Middle Window, which is kind of a ghostly reincarnation story, and it's set in Scotland, and it's gorgeous. So, I mean... And then, of course, there's the Pilgrim's Inn, which is so cozy. I think that it has a beautiful Christmas scene, so sometimes I like to read it in the winter, but the Pilgrim's Inn is a very good choice, too. It is a second in the series, but it could be totally read um, standalone, I feel like. I've read it many times by itself, and I debated reading that one versus this one, but I think I'm going to read this one uh, this fall. And this is also going to count because um, Chantel's Read Your Shelf November um, theme for her challenge is cozy, I think, a cozy read. So I'm going to read this one for that. The second one that I recommend for reading in the autumn is this picture book. It's called Too Many Pumpkins. And we have used our copy so much that I had to throw it away. <laughs> so I reordered it. It's coming. And we just love this book. The beautiful illustrations, the just the fun woman, an older woman who hates pumpkins because she was raised in a poor family and they had to eat pumpkin a lot. And she just hates them. And unfortunately, there's an accident and pumpkins get planted at her farm. And some hilarious and just heartwarming adventures happen from this and uh, we just will read this over and over again and we'll even read it out of season and I think that's why our copy got so beat up so I'm hoping to put our copy up and so that we can save it but it's okay even if we take it out sometimes I put our autumn you know books away and so I highly recommend this I just love this book as an adult and so there's also by the same author Linda White there's also too many turkeys which we also enjoy but I think the pumpkin one holds our heart the most the third one I recommend is the house with chicken legs and I have this copy but I highly recommend this copy I'll try to put it here this is the UK Osborne version, and this has gorgeous illustrations in the inside. This is the US version, and it has none of them. This is a lovely, on the edge of creepy, uh, middle grade story and retelling of the Baba Yaga, which is actually pretty creepy. It's kind of this old woman having to do with death. Um, it's a Russian folk tale, and 
This is the retelling of a young girl who lives with Baba Yaga in a house with a chicken legs. Now, if you like Howl's Moving Castle, the idea of a house that moves, has, it has a lot of that beautiful charm and the house being part like a character in the story. And so I highly recommend this. It talks about family, it talks about loneliness, friendship, life and death. Um, it's definitely, I would say, an older middle grade um, because death is dealt with and in kind of an interesting way. There's like a lot of bones and skeletons and darkness. So, but there's, she has a crow and there's just some really sweet, charming, cozy feels to this. So for, as an adult, this is just one of my most favorite autumn reads. I definitely, like I said, I would definitely be aware that it is very dark. So, but I, please get the UK version because this has none of the glorious illustrations. So, and then the next one I recommend is a memoirist and I've talked about her before and that is Gladys Tabor. And my two favorite are the Still Metal Stam Sampler and the Still, Still Metal and Sugar Bridge. And sh this one is her letters between her and her friend back and forth. And what's so neat about these is they're set up seasonally. So this one is set up monthly. So I just start wherever I am. So I would start reading in October and then go through until I feel like stopping. Um, this is just so lovely. There are reflections on children and gardening and family and nature and just lovely cooking and just so uh, warm and domestic-y. Um, and they, they're in New England. This one is set up seasonally. So I just, I just opened it up and I turned to the fall section and I've done this many years where I'll just pick these up and just read whatever season I'm in. Sometimes I read them straight through and sometimes I just dip into them. So I highly recommend Gladys Tabor. Um, this book is my favorite book in 2020 during COVID. <laughs> this is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. This is a very creepy story centered around a town and a carnival and a father-son relationship. And I love the underlying themes of facing our fears in this book. It meant so much to me in 2020 because we were facing just so much upheaval and crazy things in our world and in the United States. And this meant so much to me. This is very creepy, but oh, is it beautiful. And Bradbury's use of words and just metaphor and um, just visual, he's so good. He's just like a poet that writes po prose. And I just really, really enjoy this. I highly recommend this one for this time of year. And then last but not least, my extra. Um, this, I don't hear a lot about this series and I think there might be a, a couple reasons, but so that is the Mere Visitor series by Christine da Dabos. This is translated from French and I slowly waited and I mean, I rarely get pre-orders, but this time I did on this for the Kindle. And so, and then I, I bought the first one I haven't invest in the next one. So this is, I believe it's a four book series and they're long. Okay. And they are definitely on the end of like kind of heavy fantasy slash political slash huge cast of characters slash just like a big kind of fantastical story. And they, they center around a girl named Ophelia. And I'm just going to read a little bit of the blurb because I think it'll be easier to explain. This has, um, it is a tiny bit stream of consciousness. So I wouldn't say it's, it does, if you don't like where it, there's not, there's some things that are threads kind of just that take a long time, especially like the romance in here is super slow burn. And it's just kind of like, a side, you know, it's a little bit of a story, but it's more of a side story. But it's just full of beautiful, interesting details. And I really enjoyed it. My sister and I gobbled this up and talked about it like a couple years ago. And I, I really want to do a reread. This has, it does kind of have some autumn winterish vibes, which would be perfect because it's a kind of a big series. 
and you could just extend it out into the winter if you wanted to. But Ophelia possesses two special gifts, a talent for seeing into an object's past and the ability to travel through mirrors. Her peaceful existence on Anima is interrupted when she is promised in marriage to the taciturn Thorn, a member of a powerful clan from a cold and distant Ark, a pawn in a dangerous game that will have far-reaching consequences for her entire world, Ophelia must navigate the lies and the machinations of her fiancé's clan in order to survive in this first installment of the internationally best-selling Mirror Visitor series. So, I don't know. I really enjoyed this. Uh, the first one, this one, and the third one are my favorites. I will say the ending was a little bit... It was good, but the ending was a little open-ended. So if you don't like that kind of story, if you don't really like stream of con very detailed stream of conscious, huge cast of characters, you may not like it, but it was such a fantastical world. The arcs are uh, these lands that are on these pieces of, like they're floating through the sky. They're like these pieces of earth or planet and there's different arcs there's like a warm one there's it's just it's such a cool series i really enjoyed it so i recommend this as a perfect read for autumn going into winter and hopefully soon i will get to reread at least this one because i really enjoyed ophelia and thorn and there's all sorts of interesting characters and there's beautiful uh, fan art online about some of the characters and I really enjoy seeing people's um, art that has come out of this so so those are my five-ish recommendations for autumn and I hope you enjoy and please tell me if you've read any of these or if you recommend anything else that's kind of cozy with a slight edge of creep and not too dark so thanks and have a good day bye